What up, people? Push Wild Black here. I normally don't do the openings before I do the vlog. I usually just hit the record button and go. But Jason Witten retired today from the Cowboys. And since one of the pillars of this show has been football, and it started out with Cowboy coverage, as I did when Dez got cut, I'm doing a uh, reaction to Witten retiring. And I wanted to get Mignon Garrett from the Rant Sport and Fitness on with me. He was in a uh, he he was in travel, and there was some audio hurdles that we had to go through a little bit. And but I wanted to get his quick reaction real quick. So enjoy, people, and uh, apologize for the audio in some parts, but did the best I could. Later. Okay, bro. So, yeah. What what do you what would you what are your thoughts about when eh, Jason Wynn getting cut? Cause I know you and Ramon are having like craziness, man. Well, I mean, how I feel about it is I think that when they they didn't do a full evaluation on their players. And this this probably hit them in the gut right here because that's something I guarantee. Spectacly, yeah. Uh, because it sounded like Jerry just—it sounded like Jerry and Jason just had no idea it was coming. I mean, Whoa. I did. I did to a point because when you look back at Des Bryant and, and, and the way he was treated, I think that played a part in Jason Witten's decision to uh, think about retiring. Because when you look at that situation, look at Des situation, it kind of makes you wonder: okay, as a player, how was my production last year, and how was my production the year before? And will I get put on a chopping block like that? Should I leave before I get put on a chopping block? Or they just run me over like I, I didn't do anything for the team at all. You know, that's that's the kind of thing I think that was going on in Jason Witten's mind. He may not ever say it like that, but I think that was that's definitely a part of it. And I think, too, he I mean, he evaluated his career. Do I think he could have played? Do I think he could have played at least two more years? Yeah, I think he could have played at least two more. But I think with that death situation, it made him, it made him really think hard and deep about what was going on in the, in, in the Cowboys organization. I mean, we're looking at the Cowboys, and they're, they're pretty much – changing everything around now when we talk about offense we haven't seen them draft anybody that sticks out to me that makes me say oh wow whoa okay product okay and we got a product from lsu okay uh, but however, but they've never, but they've never done that though. Right. I mean, I'm, I mean, and I'm, I'm not, I'm not discounting what you're saying, but uh, they've never, like, they've always found guys. You know what I'm saying? They've always found dudes. Even Tony Romo, they found him. Dak, they found him. You know what I mean? Like, they find guys. Yeah, I, you know, I'm I'm up for you know, hey, finding people. Matter of fact, like this it. dude that they drafted, uh, Vin Vin, what's his name? I know, I know. <laughs> uh, Chris Ardo was Chris like, bro, I'm on Twitter, right? Because I had Twitter open yesterday, last night, dude. And Chris Ardo was like, first of all, let me just say something about like the Cowboys pick because we'll get into the draft itself in a second, but because. First, first of all, like, Jerry did 
like Jer the Cowboys in Dallas and Arlington and Jerry World, that was awesome. Like the first round was awesome. I didn't even yeah. watch basketball. I recorded basketball and watched it later just to watch the first round. I'm not going to do that again th t today, um, and I'm not going to do that tomorrow. I'm just going to, like, you know, read a recap or something. You know what I mean? Right. But, right. like, I'll watch the first hour because there ain't nothing going on basketball-wise until 7 anyway. So I'll watch from 6 to 7. But the first day, the first round is the best round because, you know, that's where the pageantry is. That's where your, right. main, that's where your main people are. First of all, they did a wonderful job. It was they did a wonderful job. Twitter really didn't know. I mean, Twitter like the undefeated kind of knew, but they people because it was it's really bad during the NBA draft where you know five to three three to five minutes before you know the draft act the pick actually happens before a trade happens. Like all the insiders put everything on Twitter to where you don't even like need to watch the draft. You can just watch Twitter. The th like first, Chris Arnold was like, "I'm I'm following him. We follow each other, and he's doing question marks. And the reason he's doing question marks is because you get five minutes per per pick, right? They use the entire five minutes to pander to cowboy fans. Yeah, of course. <laughs> like like like." Like what was the, like Peterson? What's the dude? Drew Peterson? He was the, he was there, and cause you, cause you know, and they had uh, Roger Goodell surrounded by cowboy legends anyway. And then Drew Peterson was the hype man, and he was doing whatever he was doing. And then Irvin was there, and it, like Drew Irvin Peterson, was on stage, yeah. and I'm like, yo, Drew Peterson's always the hype. You know, right, but the dude, I'm like, and then we looking at the thing. I'm I'm looking at the thing. Okay, what are you doing? Because like usually the draft picks come lightning fast. It's like two three minutes, right? So then, um, so then I'm looking at Twitter. And Chris Arnold's like Cowboy Nation question mark, like question marks. And I'm waiting for the pick. No pick. Waiting for the pick. No pick. Waiting for the pick. And then Trey Wingo was like, "Yo, they're waiting until the la the last possible moment for their pick." And they mentioned right. that Drew Pearson was the was the hype man, and he was being old and all cowboy ish. So it's it, so it's cool. So they did a good job. Um, they found this guy. Yeah, they found this guy. This guy wasn't the and like I was like, okay. And then they mentioned like, okay, well. Uh, Sean Lee is always injured, so maybe this he, he's in rotation for Sean Lee. But don't they, you just love? Don't you just love how? Let's 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 make a decision three years later. <laughs> let's go. Let's make a decision three years later on the linebacker. <laughs> let's see how many injuries. Hey, 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 Jerry, how many injuries has uh, <laughs> our, our middle linebacker Sean Lee had? Uh, oh. At least five, six. Oh, right. okay. Oh, hey. Well, hey, why not? He's on his sixth injury. Let's go ahead and bring somebody in. <laughs> <laughs> Have right. they been major injuries? Uh, yes. Yeah. Oh, well, it's time then. <laughs> he's, right. he's been hurt six times. Perfect timing. Let's bring him in. Let's draft him. Let's draft a guy. Uh, RJ Choppy was like, yeah, thanks, Jerry, for drafting somebody that did. The defense doesn't even value any since 2011. I was like, "Damn, RJ, really? <laughs> like we're doing that now?" <laughs> Man, dog. I mean, seriously. Chris, I mean, can this guy? Can this kid play? Yeah, he can play. He he, he can play. And the, I'll, I'll say this about him because uh, I watched him a little bit throughout the season. I mean, he's definitely tall. He has a slender build. He's not like a He's not your typical average linebacker like Sean Lee. You know, how, you know how Sean Lee. You can't really block him that good. He's not gonna let you block him, mm -hmm. okay? But with this kid here, he's really good at, at moving around in space, and he's kind of a ball hawk. Right. Like he knows where the ball is going. Right. You know, and and with that, I mean, that's a that's something that. 
Sean Lee is good at it. Sean Lee is kind of a ball hawk, but I, I, the way I look at Sean Lee is he's good in the gaps. He's a he, he's a I'll set the hole I'll set the hole really quick on you. Right. But this kid here, I think he's more. He's gonna be more of a. I want to. Uh, how can I say this? Uh, I would say linebacker slash strong safety kind of. Like a hybrid up. guy. Huh? Like a hybrid guy. Yeah, but not a, not the speed of a free safety though. But he he he's definitely fast. He's faster than. He's faster than Sean Lee. Right. But I think overall, Sean Lee's going to have to take him under his wing. I mean, the problem with the pick was, because I'm like, okay, like, okay, perfect example, with the Bears. The Bears wanted that that uh, that guard from uh, Notre Dame. Like, that's what they want, because they, cause, right. okay, because we need uh, an offensive, we, we need to get our offensive line right because of the offense and then Mr. Trubisky, right? But... Right. That's why, like when I, when we had that this conversation via text, I w- I texted you, yeah, we we got the one of the best uh, linebackers by accident because, okay, our guy isn't there, so let's get the best dude available and let's figure let let's get the best dude available. We need linebackers anyway, you know. We need athletes defensively anyway. Vic Fangio is a is you know beast. You know what I mean. It, like as far as the defense coordinator, let's get you know because everybody was like, well, uh, let's get a uh, Chubb, let's get Bradley Chubb if it's available. Let's trade up to get him. And when that didn't happen, I was like, okay. And then when the when, when we got the linebacker that we got, we're like, okay, cool. Like middle, he can be like a like a outside linebacker, middle linebacker hybrid dude, and you know he's good. It ain't gonna be no projects. You know what I'm saying? It's not going to be a project with 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 the Bears draft pick this year. Now, right. I don't trust Ryan Pace for the rest of the draft because he'll, he'll figure out a, he'll overdraft people. I don't really know this dude that the Cowboys drafted because Boise State, and I didn't watch Boise State like that. So you know what I you know what I learned, man, throughout throughout watching college football. Mm-hmm. Watch the teams that 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 normally aren't watched. In other, in other Watch words, the team that are, huh? in other words, don't worry about like the the Saturday night game. Watch the Saturday, uh, you know, Pac ten game or yeah, yeah. And I mean, you know, don't don't. I, and the reason I say that is is because look, I mean, look what Dallas went and got. Yeah, you know, it's players like that that you know we never even heard of. But at the same time, they're just, they're beasts to right. a point. I don't know about this guy, man. I'm, I'm gonna, I don't know how he's going to transition in the NFL. I, you know, I, I hope the best for him. I really do. I know I he just, seems to be really, really excited. But he, like, I've never seen a brother that excited genuinely to be a cowboy, dude. Like, maybe it's just because we all live in the social media ne- like age now. But yeah. that brother is like extremely happy to be a cowboy. So I bet he is. He's coming out of Boise State. <laughs> so, yeah, no, I'm, bro. I'm sorry, man. <laughs> I mean, it, you know what I mean. Like it's just if you don't. It, it seems like over the past few years, if you don't come from like stock like uh, Miami or or uh, Alabama or LSU or something like that, man. It, you know, you coming from another school like that, kind of, kind of says it all a little bit, man. Like, it really does. I mean, I, I, he, he's happy, he's excited, and everything. That dude's and gonna, I'm, I'm that dude's gonna be on Lower Greenville, the, the, in a uh, Knox and Cole, like enjoying <laughs> life. Exactly. <laughs> he's gonna be thrilled, man. You know. It's gonna be, it's gonna be there, and he's gonna be a belt line, just chilling, right, like craziness. Yeah. Um, yeah, I'm happy for him. I just hope we can get a receiver tonight. Everybody, everybody's bugging about 
you know, because when Wynn retired, like, I'll tell you, to re- like, what, um, and again, I listen, to, when this happened, I listen to the fan just because, you know, there's a there's a baseball game going on here, so, like, I, you know, they stopped with the Bears coverage, like, at 12. So I turned on the fan and on my phone, and I was just listening to the reaction, and it was kind of like, this just happened, and if this, like, because they had Steven on the, they had Steven Jones on the radio, and Steven was like, well, I didn't, I, we don't know, and apparently, because Chris Mortison was like, apparently, uh, Jerry is going to talk to, to Jason, right, first, he, he's leaning to, towards retirement now, and they're going to, and Jerry's going to talk to Jason about it first. So the, so he kind of left it open, like, well, maybe well, if they talk to him, then maybe he won't retire. Cause, and then I was listening to the fan, and uh, during their, like, midday show, they, uh, Ben and Skin called in, or Ben from Ben and Skin called in, and he was saying he kind of knew that this was a possibility, like, weeks ago. And his reasoning was, remember... Um, he got offered a job to coach for Tennessee. Oh, yeah. Yep. And he didn't take it. He couldn't take it because he was on the contract. Yeah. And he got offered the job. Apparently, you know, like, like you said in a text, he got offered the job to do Monday Night Football. And Ben brought up a very valid point. He was like, man, he's on the tail end of his career and these opportunities are coming. And if these opportunities right. are coming, he brought up a real good point. Like, okay, what if he Jason can play for two years and he's still on the contract, right? So you you be loyal to the Cowboys, but these opportunities are coming and these opportunities are coming and they're giving you a little bit more money, if not equally enough money, for you to do these new opportunities because he's what? In his forties, maybe in his late thirties, so you get these yeah, opportunities to come, 30s. huh? Yeah, he's in his late thirties. Yeah, so you get this opportunity to come to coach, and you pass it up because you're still you still want to play, and then right. and then this Monday Night Football thing happens, and they basically give you the same amount of money, and then and, and then you go, okay, I can still play, but Larry Fitzgerald retires you know, next year, and then, it, like, the, it's it's automatically there. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So what if, like, Ben was saying, he, he which, he brought, which was a good point, what if Larry Fitzgerald takes that job or somebody else takes that job and he locks it up for for five years, for 20 years? That way, that I, and then that opportunity is never there again. Right. So if you know you're going to leave, if you know you're going to leave within, you know, a year or two years anyway, and they may not, and the Cowboys may not tell you, just like they did this, <laughs> so you're just, you're, you're stuck now. So it's about taking control. Like, everybody was kind of mad. Everybody was like, man, um, everybody was like, man, like, they blindsided, they, they, they blindsided um, the Cowboys organization. And it's like, well, and technically, yeah, they did. But, you know, we're dealing with a league that will just cut you for no reason. Right. And, and to that point, too, and this is another conspiracy theory. Like, what if they, what if, what if he knew they were trying to go young? And it was brought to, and, you know, and it was brought to his attention by the organization, like, hey man, we're trying, like, I, like I'm listening to the midday show there, and he was like, hey man, um, you know, maybe, maybe you can retire because we're going a different direction. Maybe you can retire, and I can help you get a, a broadcast job or something. Like, I don't know, man. Like that whole the whole situation didn't seem right to me. You mean with, with Jason Witten and stuff? Yeah. Like the whole situation yeah, it, it was like... It doesn't right with me either because it, 
it did. It was it was random. Right. Like, that's the that's the thing. Like it was really really random. And I was I was like, wait, something don't seem right. This doesn't seem right. And now the conspiracy theories are happening. But like I said, I was listening to you know the fan, and when Ben brought up what he brought up, I was like, okay, that makes sense. Like if he knows that he only has a year or two left, and they offer him money to leave, they offer him money to leave. You know, Mon- Monday. But then again. That's the weird thing too. Why would you offer a player that's still that's under contract a Monday night football job? Yeah. And then like like I said, the Duke, the, the midday show was mentioning um that maybe this was orchestrated by the Cowboys conspiracy theory. Maybe this was orchestrated by the Cowboys uh to take care of Witten, you know, cuz we know that happens because Jerry made sure Nate Newton got a job for the radio. Oh, yeah. So, I mean, like, over at ESPN. So, you know, like, before the fan came in to be. So, I'm like, that's not, I mean, it's a conspiracy theory, but it's not a bad one. You know what I mean? No, it's not bad. So, it just, it just seems, like, the whole situation just seems weird. Like, the dance thing, I didn't think, I never thought they were going to cut him. I, f- I figured they would have traded him, but I never thought they would have cut him. What, with Wynn retiring, I'm like, yeah, this is not, this don't seem right. Yeah, it just, it's just a list of things the Cowboys are, are going through right now, man. I mean, that we, that we as fans, you know, really don't know what's going on in that office. Uh, I really deep down think a lot of that was because of the way death was done. I really do. Right. And because for a player just to up and leave, up and just offer to retire, it, it makes me think that that with everything that's been going on with the Cowboys as a whole, all the negativity, all the the drama that's been happening. I don't think Jason Witten wants to be a part of that. Right. You know? Right. And to do the right thing by the Cowboys, as loyal as he is, as loyal as he is, he doesn't want to leave the Cowboys on a bad note. Right. Which I get it. I mean, you've been there 15 years, you saw all this, all these different changes happen. I mean, I just, I, I really do believe that, that he, he's such a good guy, man. I can tell that. He's got a good heart. And he's not going to, I don't think he's the type that's going to just speak out. He's not going to vent what he feels. Right. Yeah. He's just going to be one of those guys that says, okay, I don't like the changes. I'm getting out. Right. And I think that's what that's what would agree to. Is if they don't hear, if he doesn't hear what he wants to from Jerry, I think Whitney's gone, bro. Hands down. I mean, it. And really, is it a bad time for him to leave? No, it's not a bad time for him to leave. He's he's up in age. You know, his body's probably feeling it now. Um, you know, so I mean. And he's, the and, Cowboys, are, huh? and they're going in the situation. You in, you in the store now? Yeah. Okay. They're going in the situation where, man, I read an article. Of, uh, Channel Eight did an article where basically, bro, and but basically, dude, and kind of, we've been saying it. We we've been saying it since we've been doing stuff on YouTube. We've been saying it privately. He like with. When the first couple games we we saw Dak play, like it's not he's not a quarterback to where he locks on a guy. What? You know what I'm saying? So yeah, exactly. the and idea Jason that like he locks on a dude and and makes a dude his favorite receiver that may happen, but now everything is like spread out and everything is balanced now. Yeah, 
Yeah, so, I mean, when you think about it, a player like Jason Witten doesn't, I mean, if, if they're going the route that we think they're going, if the Cowboys are going in, where does Jason Witten fit? Because he's not a, he's not a speedy type of tight end. Right. You know, he's, he's, they're using him for more blocking than anything. So, if but I tell you what, though, I tell you what, though, with the offense that they're going to be running, they're going to need a tight end off that edge, man. Now, hold on, though. Now, they're, they're now, remember, uh, remember that text I sent you about them going back to kind of that Air Coriel, Mike Martz style of stuff, which, which, Jason Garrett, that's what got Tony. Remember how I said I'm. Uh, that's not. That's bad. I said that's bad. That's the same style of offense that got Tony Romo injured every year. So yeah. So I mean, like you're hearing. Okay, they might go back to that. There's an article saying that they don't. There, there's an article that WFAA mentioned that they really don't want to have a number one receiver. They want to have like a bunch of good receivers that are fast and can spread the ball around. And then it was kind of like, okay, so our, and then Steven was on, was on the radio and he was mentioning, then they asked him like, okay, if Wynn's not going to be here, are you comfortable using Ezekiel Elliott as more of a, a pass catching threat? And they and Steven seemed like he was open to the idea of that. So right. you know what I'm saying? Like like if they if they go towards if they go towards that or they kinda go towards that and then they put some read option stuff in there, then um I'm I'm skeptical just because I saw how that style used to hurt Tony Roma. But it's like maybe you don't need maybe you don't need a tight end as a as a receiver. Maybe you can just get another lineman or you get like a blocker or something. I don't know. But you catch that part I said where it's gonna be a lot of changes. Yeah, it's gonna be a different team. Yeah, I mean completely different and it's gonna be Dak friendly. Yeah. That's like if, what if the whole be. if the whole situ if they're going like full, like okay, Zeke's a knucklehead, but Zeke's his best friend, and then it's just gonna be like, like said Zeke's his best friend, right? You know what I'm saying? Like if if if, if they cool, and Zeke's his best friend, and you just pray that he doesn't, you know, find him another chick, and you know, get any issues, any any issues in Dallas, then yeah, like. If it's going to be a Zeke-friendly offense, then... Right. Yeah, if it's going to be a Z, If it's going to be like a Dak-friendly offense, and... Every... I, I think... I think Cowboy Nation is like, oh, man. Um, <clears throat> like... Like, Dez is leaving. And then, like... There's, there's things that you could have did last night that everybody would have been like, Wow. Whereas, whereas, like, yesterday, people were like, man, I don't know what to feel. And then this morning, with when, like, you know, people were upset when Dez left. Me and you had a long conversation about it. Um, we had a long conversation about it. It was, like, three hours. Um which a lot of the points are being brought up now. And with today, everybody's like, when's leaving? And it's like, like the fans are like, when's leaving? And everybody's like, this is sudden. But then when we're thinking about it, we're like, okay, what do we do now? And it's obvious that this just happened because you got to think that if they knew about this a week ago, the draft would be different. Like, you, you, you're trading up to get some, some another piece. You know what I'm saying? Like, like I, like I the Cowboys are like, no, um, our draft board is still the same. I don't believe them. 
Like if they knew if, if they knew that this was that if they went into the draft with Jason Wynn retiring, their draft board would have been different. You can't tell would be different. You can't tell me otherwise. Oh yeah. I believe that. So to me is is I'm I wish him well. I think he'll be then again, I don't know, because I didn't think Tony Romo was this, like, perfect for the booth. But, right. yeah, because I didn't think he would be, like, as good as he is. But with Jason Wynn, and then that might be something, too, as far as, like, you know, the reason that he decided to retire to take the opportunity. Because, you know, if that's going to be your number one like, because that's a sweet gig, dude, to, like, be in the booth and then to do, to be in the booth and then to do, like, you know, studio shows and stuff. So, right. and they wanted to get, uh, they wanted to get uh, Peyton, um, but he was like, he didn't want to, he, he didn't want to um, criticize Eli. He didn't want to do shows and, uh, or he didn't want to be in the booth and he didn't want to, like, call his brother's games. So Peyton was, Peyton was like, nah, I don't want to, uh, Peyton Manning was like, I don't want to do the games until Eli retires, because I don't want to, like, break down film of him. Which I don't understand, that's baby brother, I get it. You know what I'm saying? But, like, if him and, if Jason Wynn and Tony Romo are cool, and Tony Romo's are, if Tony Romo's saying, like, yo, um, this is real easy, man, and it's a lot of fun, and we get paid the same amount of money. Like, let's go. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, I, I can totally understand when it's like, yeah, I'm gonna, I'm gonna not play now, and I'm gonna let my body heal and do this. Which I totally understand. I understand that. I mean, I mean, especially when it's like the numbers are right, and if you know. You're hearing from your best friend that it's it's a good position to be in. Why not? I mean, the sky's the limit. He's been in the league for 15 years. The only thing that I hate about him leaving is that he doesn't have a Super Bowl. He was one of the best tight ends in the league. He was one of the best to do it. And he didn't get a ring. Yeah. Um, yeah, that's. I feel that, that hurts. I, I feel that same way about uh, Matt Forte, dude. Like, cause Matt Forte just just officially retired a bear, did that one day thing, and did the whole official like I retire as a bear. So yeah. I'm like, dang, dude, you never even like, you, like you, because like Matt was one of those, and it's been so many awesome. It's been. It's, it's been so many awesome Bears players, and you know this as a Cowboy fan. You, we watch these dudes give up their bodies, and it is to try to get a ring, and it, it never happens. And it's like, dude, and we've seen guys best in their positions in some cases, and they never win a Super Bowl. They they'll get there, like in, in Brian Urlacher's case, he got there, but he didn't win one. Right. So. You know, it just that sucks, dude. Because you do root for him, and you do kind of that. That's our that's our guy, and uh, then you don't. They don't end up getting one, and it's like damn. So yeah, that's a that's an issue for me. And I'm just like, man. Even though he probably he probably always wanted one, but I think at this point in his life, he's probably really happy, man. I mean. We got to play a game that not everybody gets to play. And it's just, that ring to me is the, the icing on the cake, you know? Mm-hmm. For him to get, get one, I'm really surprised he actually stayed with Dallas as long as he did, really. I mean, with everything that had been going on. I mean, Okay. But if you're, but think about it, dude. If your best friend is the quarterback, you you know you get in touches, you know you're an integral part of the offense, and it's Dallas. 
Right. Like we're not talking about you, you living in a you living in the fourth largest city in the country. You know what I'm saying? You playing in a dome. Non foot when you're not playing football, you don't have to deal with the with the snow like or anything. It gets cold there, but it's not like you know frozen. Yeah, it's not like frozen. Not to the point where. Not to the point where like you you know you got to put on like heavy clothes and stuff. Right. So, like, if you're comfortable. And you get numbers, and they paying you. Why would you leave? That's true. Like, bro, I can understand Dez being mad. Like, he don't want to leave. Like, not like, bro. Now he got to wait. Oh, by the way, because um, I want to talk about the draft for a second. Like, in, in as a whole, uh, what you? I want to ask you a couple questions about the moves. Uh, Josh Rosen getting getting drafted by the Cardinals, and then his after um, his after the draft, I don't want to say press conference, but interview, where basically he said nine mistakes, nine teams made mistakes. Yes, I heard that. You heard that. Uh, what did you think? Because I have thoughts. I thought of Tom Brady. <laughs> right. Exactly. I was like, um, yeah, he's gonna be mad. He got that. He got that little t- Tom Brady anger for no reason. Yeah. <laughs> and you know when people were blowing up about him saying that, it's just like, what did he do? I mean, I mean, it to me, it's just like what Brady did and what Brady tells you to his day. Well, see, there are other things though, man. Like Josh. Oh, I know. Josh. I know he got dude. in trouble. It, it, it's just, well, not even that, man. Like, okay, because cause you got Rosen and then you got the dude from Wyoming. Like, dude from Wyoming did, Wyoming said the N-word stuff. Uh, yeah. Rosen was, I think that's his name. He, that's, that's the uh, dude, that's the U.S. UCLA guy. Okay? Yes. So, yeah, yeah. yeah like, he, because he been ticking off everybody because he's privileged he really doesn't need football, and he said it. And although Johnny doesn't need it, didn't need it either. He just never said it publicly. So, and he's aggravating. Like, and a lot of the coaches are like, "Yeah, Josh is kind of like a dude that questions a lot of stuff." So uh, he's a lot of dude that questions a lot of things. Everybody talks about him the fact that he's a millennial, which he really isn't. He's a, he's the, the generation after the millennials. So, fine. It, it, like, he's on the beginning of that. But, yeah, yeah man, like... So, what, what year was he born? What, 90? Let's see. He's 21. So... 90, yeah, like 90... 98, 99. I'm not sure. I think 99. Yeah. Yeah. And then, wow. like, bro, he did an interview... He did an interview about... Uh, Cause they asked him, like, you're probably not gonna be, you're you're probably not gonna be the number one pick, and he was like, I don't care about that. And he, and he, bro, he was name dropping. He was like, I was always number two. I was number two in high school. Name dropped the guy that he was number two with, and he said that guy ain't playing no more. Then he was the num. Then he was the number two prospect when he came out of high school, and he and, there, and he said there were two guys that were going to UCLA, and they were gonna be saviors of the, UC, the UCLA. Both of them are. You don't hear from them no more, but I'm. St- but I'm here. So he's always had that like I'm a jerk, chip on my shoulder type of thing. He's always had that, and I thought it was funny because, like Aaron Rodgers has that chip on his shoulder, and Rosen has a chip on his shoulder. Yeah. Like so, basically, you got an angry quarterback that's mad at the world. Because he should have been drafted first. Yeah. I'm sorry to cut this short, man. I got a jet, dude. No, you're good.